Do you like UFC? Do you also like whiskey? Well, I have paired them both together for the ultimate tasting. Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat. And a few weeks ago, I hosted a UFC and whiskey tasting event. I called this punch and brunch because it happened in the middle of the day. This was for the UFC 280 fights and they were happening in Dubai. So here on the West Coast, that meant that they started in the morning. We started by watching Sterling defend the bantamweight title against Dillashaw. Then we saw Oliveira and Makachev clash over the lightweight title. But the main event was a highly anticipated four round whiskey weight championship bout. So how did I pair UFC and whiskey? Well, I don't really follow UFC that closely, but I do get very excited to be able to research the fighters that are in the main events and then pair whiskeys according to their background. So we have four fighters that I paired whiskeys with. We have Sterling versus Dillashaw, and then we have Oliveira versus Makachev. Now, Sterling is from New York, so of course I paired Sterling with a New York whiskey. And New York is known for producing a lot of rye as of late. So I went with Ragtime Rye. This is a New York straight rye whiskey. This is a cask strength and single barrel that I picked up from Aster Wines. It's sitting at 56% ABV and has a mash bill of 72% rye, 16% corn, and 12% malted barley. This was aged for seven years in new charred American oak, and as I said, it's bottled at cask strength. Now, Dillashaw is from Colorado, so I picked a Colorado whiskey. And not just any Colorado whiskey, I picked a whiskey from the first distillery in Colorado since Prohibition. I picked Stranahan's. This is Blue Peak. This is sitting at 43% ABV. It's from 100% malted barley. It's double distilled using hybrid copper pot stills. And then it's aged for a minimum of four years in new charred American oak barrels. It's then finished in Stranahan's Solera system that they have where they use photos to create their Solera style system. You can learn more about Stranahan's if you head over to my blog, actually. I'll leave a link in the description below because I recently went to visit Stranahan's and went on a full distillery tour. Now, Oliveira and Makachev were a little bit challenging to pick whiskeys to represent them. Oliveira is from Brazil and a typical Brazilian spirit is Cachaça. So ultimately I wanted to find a whiskey that was finished in cachaça. There's not a whole lot on the market. So I decided to throw a huge curveball and actually just serve a barrel aged cachaça. This is Nova Fogo, their barrel aged cachaça. Now cachaça is a Brazilian rum and this is made from 100% sugar cane juice. It is pot distilled and aged for two years in ex bourbon barrels. It's bottled at 40% ABV, but you can see there's some color in there. It's quite light because of the ex bourbon barrels. But yeah, curveball of the century right here. Now, even though I decided to break from the whiskey lineup by throwing in a cachaça for Makachev, who's Russian, I didn't want to break completely and serve a vodka, which, right, you think of vodka when you think of Russian spirits. Um, so I had to use a little bit more creativity for this one. Now, a lot of high-end vodkas include the addition of wheat or are made entirely from wheat. And the largest Russian population in the US is actually in New York City and more specifically in Brooklyn. So I went with a wheat whiskey produced in Brooklyn. This is 7-7 Seven Seven Whiskey, their wheat whiskey. This is produced by Brooklyn Distilling. 
I'm assuming that I'm pronouncing that correctly, but maybe not. It's bottled at 45% ABV and is from 100% New York wheat. This is aged in new charred American oak casks for 883 days. That's about two and a half years, 2.4 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! So, let's taste all of these. We're gonna taste these in the same order as I served them. However, I served them completely blind to everyone. So they had no idea even what four spirits that I chose. Now, before I taste, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave me comments, uh, subscribe to the channel, but you can also join our neat community over on Patreon. I've got a link in the description below. So let's start with the Stranahan's Blue Peak. This has a nice light color to it, which is interesting that it's aged in new charred American oak barrels because there is a really light coloration to this. I would call this like a, a dark honey or a light caramel. And right away, I'm getting a ton of honey. There's also a touch of fresh hay and a lot of citrus. I'm getting both like orange peel as well as lemon. I get some toffee as well. And there's a little bit of spice, but it's like a fresh grated nutmeg. Right away, this is like toasted whole wheat bread with orange marmalade on top. I get some light spices. There's now some cinnamon that's along with that nutmeg. It's very light and delicate. It's really nice. A great way to start off a whiskey tasting. Next, let's move on to the Novo Fogo Cachaca. Just as I showed you before, it's really, really light in color. I would call this a light honey, perhaps, perhaps a little straw color. And nosing this right after the Stranahan's, I get a lot more sweet notes coming forward. This is like honey in combination with like royal icing. There's also some citrus in here as well, but I'm getting more of like a key lime. And as I move past the sweet notes on the nose, I'm getting like a hint of jalapeno, just a slight hint. This is also very light on the nose. That honey also comes forward on the palate, but now I'm getting a little bit more of some vegetal qualities a little bit more herbaceousness. I'm getting some hay as well as some herbs and spices. I'm getting like caraway and cinnamon bark. And then the finish has some nice delicate fruits. I'm getting things like golden raisins. Next up, we have 7-7 Seven Seven Whiskey, the wheat whiskey. This has a lot of color to it. I would definitely call this a dark caramel color. Little copper notes as well. This, I'm getting sweet wood, sweet oak right off the bat. There's a lot of caramel, but like burnt caramel and a little bit of like sawdust in the background. I'm getting some blood orange as well as some prunes. There's a little bit of maple and cinnamon as well. This definitely has a little bit more heat than the first two, than the Stranahan's and the Novo Fogo. And I'm getting a lot of grain forward flavors right off the bat. I'm getting those like really grainy crackers. I don't know what they're called, but they're like essentially like compressed bread. I'm getting some of that dark caramel coming forward. And there's also this like, I wanna say chocolate covered espresso, However, 
I think it's like ruby chocolate covered espresso because I'm getting this really uh, back and forth of, of this espresso note with this like very sweet, chocolatey, almost fruity note. And then that kind of transforms into dark chocolate on the finish. Last but not least, we have the Ragtime Rye. Again, this is cask strength. This also has a lot of color to it, but less so than the 7-7 Whiskey. So I'd call this like a, a normal caramel color. There's a ton of rye spice on the nose right away. There's caraway and just hints of dill, but it's very much like rye bread. There's some orange zest. And there's just like a touch of molasses. This one definitely has the most heat out of the four, so that cask strength uh, really comes forward. And there is a lot of rye bread notes right off the bat with some honey. Then we get the spices, the caraway and the dill, but there's also some more herbs that are coming forward, like oregano and thyme. Then some fruits start to come forward in the finish. It starts as like some dried figs and then moves into prunes. All four of these spirits are very delicious and I would highly recommend checking out any of them. Now, if you are a whiskey fan and you're looking to get into rums, don't be shy and Novo Fogo is a great introduction into cachaca. One of the reasons I was also excited about introducing Novo Fogo into the tasting was to open the whiskey drinker's eyes to something other than whiskey. So barrel aged cachaca um, and everyone really enjoyed it. So I'm glad I did. I also like to pick brands that are craft distilleries that the general consumer probably hasn't heard of before or maybe hasn't tried before so that they actually get to try these smaller producers. So everyone got to try a single malt, a wheat whiskey, a rye whiskey, and a barrel aged cachaca. So they got to sample a very wide variety of different spirits. So remember all four of these were tasted completely blind and you saw that there were a lot of overlapping tasting notes that I was getting. No one guessed all four of these correctly. So this was a very challenging tasting. And every time I do a blind tasting, I like to remind everyone that blind tasting is so humbling. I'm pretty sure I couldn't have even uh, picked out the four of these in a blind lineup. Now, I also had everyone rank their favorites. Um, and there was a pretty even spread across the board for all four of them. Everyone had their own preference. However, the one that everyone enjoyed the most overall was the 7-7 Seven -Seven Wheat Whiskey, which is really exciting. This is a craft distillery and they're producing a whiskey using 100% New York wheat. Wheat whiskeys aren't that popular. There's not a whole lot of them out there. So I'm excited to see one that's pretty unique being chosen as the most popular of the event. I love getting to put together tasting events like this. And if you would also like to put together your own tasting event, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you out and give you insights into how I actually uh, pick the lineup and how I pick the order of each whiskey.